Hello and welcome back to another video and today as you'll have seen by the title and thumbnail we are here on MotoGP 22 doing something a little bit different than usual and today we are doing our first game experiment. Now if you are new to the channel every year I do tend to do this and this is basically where I'll just delve into the files and I'll just probably mess around with one thing in the game and we kind of see what we get and what interesting results we actually get. And this time we're looking at the Moto E class which at the time of recording is not in the game officially yet. It is it is there in the files and you will see that it's not quite finished of course. Now it will be added in a patch in the future, that's usually how it goes. But at this point it's actually not. So let's have a look at it then. So we'll go into Grand Prix mode. And as you'll see everything looks pretty normal here. We've got Fabio Quattararo. If we go to select rider, it comes up with the class screen. And look what we've got here, Moto E. Obviously it does say Moto 3 in the left hand corner there. But basically what I've done is I've replaced the button on the menu for the Moto 3 class with the Moto E class. So if we actually click onto this here, you can see it is in fact Moto E. Now it's not updated to this year yet, it's still last year's Moto E. So we've got Jordi Torres, Matteo Ferrari, Dominic Agata. Then we've got Casade, Granado, you know, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you've got all these riders here. And this is what I mean about it being slightly bugged and outdated, because you can see we've got Zaccone, who is no longer in Moto E, and is now in Moto 2. So his name is actually missing from the game, which is why it appears like this. Uh, who else? Uh, there is another one that was out of gear, isn't it? We'll get to him in a minute. There you go. Same thing with out of gear. Of course, he's no longer in the Moto E class. He's now in Moto 2. So the game does bug out a little bit here. But you can see they've done a lot of the work for this already. So they've got a lot of the riders. I think Granado's already moved teams as well because I'm pretty sure he was still with the Avintia team last year. And he's actually on the correct team here. He's on the one energy bike. So I, I believe that's the correct transfer. I could be mistaken. Honestly, I don't really, I haven't really seen much Moto E, to be honest. It doesn't get shown where I live, so I, I can't really watch it. But uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, Granada has moved for this year, but he may well have done that for last year. So it is a little bit outdated, as you can see, but it does seem like maybe some things are updated. Same with the factory teams here as well. I'm not going to spend too long going through the menus. You can see, obviously, all the factory bikes are there. So I think today we are going to play as Dominic Agata. And if we go to select track, you can indeed see that we can do any of the 2022 tracks, none of the 2009 ones. But that's also the same case for Moto2 and Moto3. So it seems like that's going to be how it works this year and probably will be how it works with Red Bull rookies as well, I'd assume. Now, since the last race was obviously the French Grand Prix and there was Moto E there, I feel like we're going to go here today. So I think we should hop into this weekend, kind of get a bit of a feeling of how the AI are, look at some of the maybe slightly unfinished areas and just see how they behave with this class not technically being in the game yet. So then, as you can see, we're down here on the grid, and as it was in the last few games, they've just all sort of got the generic mechanics and uh, umbrella, just saying Moto E on them, so like Energica, rather than actually having different ones for each team for the Moto E class. I've got to say, though, it does feel like this mode is much more finished than it has been in previous years. In a lot of the previous games, when Moto E has not been in the game yet, and I've added it in, it's really been very broken, but this time it does seem pretty normal, so we perhaps won't get the... The kind of weirdness that we've had in previous years of course if you go to consumption check there is no fuel because there's no fuel in a moto e-bike it is electric so it's good that they've got that attention to detail but honestly that probably was in the last game as well i literally i don't think i played moto e properly ever in the in the last year's game i think i only did it for the experiment video so we're 10th place on the grid we've got this race start i kind of see see what happens it will be interesting to see how the ai do behave because they may they may not be fine-tuned yet so, yeah, we can't accelerate. Yeah, we've got to wait till the, the race actually starts. Then it lets me accelerate, I assume. Yeah, there we go. So off the line we go for the first e pre ever in MotoGP 21. And, okay, that's a little bit of weirdness there. Some of them are going slow. I think this may be some of the weirdness happening. If we break for here. I noticed that I feel like the, uh, the sponsor board's are different. And I've been taken down already. That didn't take long, did it? Oh, okay, I was actually going to say, I'll be interested to see if I have to pick the bike up, and... Okay, that time it was my fault. I can't really, I can't really blame anybody else there. <laughs> so what I was actually going to say was, I wonder if you actually have to pick the bike up with the manual uh, bike retrieval. I know, I think you could on the last game, but I think that was before it had actually been added, so I don't know if they changed it, because of course in Moto E, the bikes are so heavy, they can't actually pick the bikes up properly. It has happened a couple of times throughout the seasons, but... On the whole, they usually can't, but they do seem to be... They are, do seem to be a little bit broken, because this should still be 120%. I've not changed the difficulty. So, you can see they don't really know where they're going. It's like, oh, I've high-sided again! <laughs> but we may as well keep going this time, because we can see how slow the AI are going. This very much reminds me of... If you've been around for a really long time, the 181 Rider Championship that I did back on MotoGP 18. Uh, sorry, MotoGP 19. Where the Moto E and the Red Bull Rookies riders didn't know their way around most of the circuits. 
so they would crawl around. You can see they've gone in a little bit hot here, so the AI don't aren't finely tuned at all. In Moto E, they have no idea what's going on, they don't know what to do. So we're going past Ferrari there, past Aldeguer, got Torres. I'd assume the rider performances aren't done either. I've gone very hot into garage there. Obviously, there's no... Oh, I was gonna say... oh okay, there has been a crash. Let's have a look at that. Tulevich seems to have had contact with somebody. So the AI kind of know what they're doing, as you can see. And of course, it is actually... They are really bad at Le Mans anyway. They do break nice and early. But it does seem like they're a bit unsure of where they're going because that's obviously the line they're taking there. That's not the correct line at all. They've gone completely off the circuit almost there. So it does seem like the AI are a little bit broken in this class. But I've got to say, it's more finished than I expected. I've gone off the track of the AI. I've got to follow me there. So side by side with Granado. Really two of the contenders for this championship here. Agatha and Granado side by side. Granado getting in front of us. We can get a bit of a slipstream. Go back past Eric. There we go. Back up into 11th place. Can we get Hikaria Kubo? Try and go on the outside of him. Might get Cassade as well. I think he's won a race. I think he won one of the races at Le Mans, Cassade. I think he won the first one. But they've gone, they've gone a bit wide through the first part of the chicane. We're up the inside of Cassade. Okay, there's a little bit of a an interesting <laughs> interesting texture there. It's a placeholder texture on the boot, so that is probably the first buggy thing we've seen, aside from the AI not really behaving. So we've got Kevin Zanoni just at the road, and I'm really I'm not 100 percent sure how to pronounce the, the guy the name of the guy in front of us. P Ray, maybe? I'm not 100 percent sure. We're up the inside of P Ray anyway, if that's how it's pronounced. Got Hernandez a bit up the road. I'm going wide as well. I can't really say that AI are broken if I'm following their lines exactly. Interesting to see how this race is actually four laps rather than three. I'm not sure what the percentage I had it set at. Probably maybe this is probably a 50% race to be fair, because motor E races are usually like 10 laps maximum, aren't they? So, yeah, it's probably like about a 50% race. So, we've got Hernandez up the road, Maria Herrera. There's been another crash behind. So, yeah, I'm fairly surprised, to be completely honest, about how the AI are behaving. Because they're generally not too bad, but their lines are a little bit broken through some corners. We couldn't quite get around the outside of Herrera there. Can we get up the inside of Herrera? There we go. Herrera looked a little strange coming out of that corner. It seemed like her back was kind of scrunched in a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that on the sort of left-hand side, like where the Alpine size logo was on her suit. It seems to be a bit broken. Now, that might be down to the, the, the female body. There is a different uh, rider model for the females in this game. That might just be a bug with the animation on that, potentially. Because uh, Herrera is actually the only... Oh, no, there's Carrasco as well. So Herrera and Carrasco are both in this game now. So you actually have to watch out to see if that happens in, in Moto3 with uh, Carrasco as well. But there we go, then. Let's make this charge. Let's see if we can get up the pack a little bit. So around the outside of Zaccone. Or actually, hashtag rider underscore motor e dash Alessandro dash Zaccone underscore name, actually. I, I believe is a uh, believe is full name. And we've got Mikel Pons in front, Jasper Irama, and then it's uh, Corentin Perilari, I think, in the lead currently. So I think we are going to be able to, after crashing, get back up into the lead of this race. So the inside we go. So Irama's next, and then it's Corentin Perilari in front. we get Irama. There we go, we've passed him. Up next then is Perilari. It's kind of a little bit anticlimactic when I can kind of just blast past them because I don't know what they're doing. Where is he going? He's all over the green. Oh! Oh, <laughs> off I sided again. So these Moto E bikes, I tell you, they've got no traction control on, of course. And they are so, so difficult to ride. So easy to high side. If these are the physics of the actual Moto E bikes when they come out, it'll actually be quite fun to play. I've never particularly played the Moto E bikes much in these games, if I'm completely honest. I only really play the main three categories. I don't really touch the historic bikes much either. So it is a bit of a shame because you think about the amount of effort that's put into this class. I mean, you can see currently obviously it's unfinished, but all this work that's going to be done on it to finish it and it's not really get touched much. It's always a bit of a shame. But I tell you what, I reckon I can still have a shot at winning this if I can not throw myself off again. I'm going to push it because I can see the leader from here. If we do another, if we do like a perfect lap on this lap, well, we've just cut that corner. So we've only got one shot limit warning left. So we've got to be careful. <laughs> The inside we go of Hernandez. Wow, that was completely out of order, wasn't it? Just absolutely ran Johnny Hernandez out the way. Herrera's up next then. So past Herrera. Back up into fifth place. We're probably going to get fourth here. On the run down to Garage there. We might even get third off Pons. You know what? We actually might be able to win this race, to be honest. Because we're up to third place already. Although well, Mikel Pons is not going to have any of it. Mikel Pons has pushed me off the circuit. And I've got a long lap for that. Are you joking me? No, no, no. I'm not having that. I'm not having that. That is unfair as a long lap penalty. I got pushed off by the other rider. That's unbelievable. It shouldn't really have been a track limits warning, I don't think, anyway, in my opinion. There you go, that time it wasn't, but Pons absolutely ran me that time. So 2.7 behind Perilari, we might be able to do this. This is going to come down to, like, the last corner, I think. So we've passed Pons, can we get Iwama? Jasper, come on Jasper, give us a bit of... There we go, we've kind of punted him. 
So there we go. We, I think we are going to do it. We are catching up a lot of Paralari here. You can see my fastest lap. I've got two seconds underneath my uh, best lap so far. So I'm still gaining a lot of time with these. We're going to get him. We're going to get Paralari up into the lead. So we're going to win this... Uh, I don't know if they're actually still called Grand Prix or if they're called e Prix. I know in Formula E it's called an e Prix, but I don't know about Moto E, actually, to be honest. But either way, as Neil Hodgson says, then we're going to win the electric race up towards the line. 2.6 seconds quicker than my previous best lap with two crashes. I'll take it. So then this is the stuff I love to see as well at the end, where you can just see that really, really tiny text for Alessandro Zaccone's name because it's just got the entire key written down there. Hashtag rider underscore motor e underscore Alessandro dash Zaccone underscore name hashtag rider underscore motor e underscore Alessandro dash Zaccone underscore surname in fifth position there. And then obviously we've got the same further down with Fermin out again. I'm not going to read that out again. But there you have it then. That's been an early look at Moto E. Not released to the game yet. I think that's just more what's cool about it. It's the fact that it's not actually, you're not supposed to be able to actually access it, but we have. And we've seen kind of how it looks before it's finished. Uh, I think that's the cool part of it rather than all the, the crazy stuff. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that one anyway. Do let me know if you want me to try anything else in the game. That could be trying to maybe get Rebel Rookies working. In the past, I've added a ramp like on the start finish straight of some of the tracks to see how the AI reacts. Basically anything. If you have any ideas, you know, sticking different riders in different categories, seeing how they get on, putting different bikes and things together, let me know because I'm happy to try anything. I might also try some of the Moto2, Moto3 riders at uh, some of the historic circuits, but I feel like the results will be very similar to this where they're just running wide, missing the apexes rather than actually anything like mad and crashes all over the place, any of those kind. But I hope you have enjoyed that video regardless. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Hope you all stay safe and I shall see you in the next one.